So my Minecraft in Roblox game is slow. I mean, this is real-time rendering right now. This is absolutely horrendous. Now, what you can see that we had before was a very large world. I mean, almost infinite. However, this isn't very performant. If you were to load every single chunk into your client on Minecraft, you'd probably blow up your computer. But as you can see, even though we get these really nice results, it did lag to get them. For my Minecraft in Roblox clone to be playable, obviously that is not going to do. We're going to create Minecraft in Roblox that's actually playable. Now, in the previous video, we looked into Minecraft biome and how Minecraft create biomes in Roblox Studio. However, this game was still really laggy. I mean, as you can see, we're not even loading that many chunks. We're already seeing horrid performance, especially as the part count goes up. I mean, look at all of the unwanted blocks rendered. To be honest, I don't even know what's going on with the chunk system. I mean, this just looks like one big ball of mess. But obviously, this is not going to do in terms of a Minecraft clone, so let's make it better. So between the last episode and this one, which was a long time ago, obviously we made biomes, but I'm pretty sure I tried to add caves and it's gone horribly wrong. And I also also pretty sure this is now 3D noise as well, but as you can see the chunk system is completely ruined. This is not turned into Minecraft in Roblox anymore, it's turned into rubbish. So I think it's time to scrap this one and start anew. Now there are two new features in Roblox Studio, and I say new because they were new at the time, but there are two new features in Roblox Studio that I'm going to use to try and improve the performance of our Minecraft Roblox clone. Now the first one is probably the most important and that is parallel scripting. Now parallel scripting in Roblox Studio uses an actor model, it allows you to complete functions asynchronously without causing something called race conditions. And race conditions are when you try and affect the same piece of data at the same time, leading to errors. However, the actor model is going to allow us to generate the terrain. The next thing I want to implement is a buffer system. It ensures that everything that is produced in those actor models is stored as a buffer and then sent back to the main thread for it then to save into the world database. We're also going to make use of events and coroutines to try and make chunk generation and client chunk requests as smooth as possible. Now, this image here shows a breakdown of the whole model itself. This is what I've come up with as probably one of the fastest solutions in Roblox Studio at the moment. Obviously, if you have any suggestions on changing this, then do let me know in the comments. Okay, so the first thing to achieve our new chunk generation system in Roblox Studio, we had to create our parallel environment so that we could generate chunks asynchronously. We did this by generating about 16 actors for chunk generation, and then there'll be about 16 more actors for rendering. Now, you're probably asking what chunks are we going to give these and what order are we going to give them to make it most performant? Because in the previous one, as you could see, it was just three for loops nested in each other and it wasn't very performant from where the player was standing. So we have to come up with an algorithm here that gives the chunks to the workers to generate from where the player is standing and then outwards. So that's exactly what we did. We first generate the center chunk so we don't have any duplications. Then we loop almost in a spiral, adding the chunks to a queue for the chunk generators to generate. As you can see, the results are great. It starts from the center and it builds its way out. And obviously this is exactly what we want in our Minecraft world. So now that we have an effective way to generate our chunks, we need a way for the client to request chunks so they can render it on their client. Side. Now we're storing the chunks in a buffer, so each block in each buffer takes 8 bits. If we have a chunk size of 8, it's going to be 8 cubed, as there's 8 cubed blocks in a chunk, and that gives us 512 bytes in a buffer. Now if we change this to 16, obviously it's going to be 16 cubed, so the buffers are going to be larger, but this may be more performant effective later on, which we'll see later in the video. Now what we can do is when the player wants to render the world in from where they spawn, say they spawn at 0, 0, 0, they can request this chunk from the server, and the server will return that buffer back to them via the network, and then from there, the client will render the chunk on their end. So implementing this into Roblox Studio, this worked great. However, when rendering the chunk like this, you can see that there's a lot of unwanted blocks. I mean, we saw this in the previous version of the clone that we made, where unwanted blocks in a chunk would appear. However, the block face culling that we had in episode two wasn't doing us justice, as it was only removing the textures of the block, not the actual block itself. So what would be ideal was if we could get rid of these blocks that were unseen to the user, as they're just useless blocks that they're never going to see. Now, for the blocks in the middle of the chunk, this is quite easy easy to do. You just need to check the neighboring block and check if it's surrounded. And if that block is surrounded by non-translucent or non-transparent blocks, then we can remove that block from the world. If we do that, then as you can see, it still looks normal. If we zoom into the chunks themselves, you can see that the inside of the chunk is gone. And okay, this increases performance a little bit of our Minecraft Roblox clone, but there's still these blocks on the edges of chunks that are still going to render. We now need to check the six neighboring chunks to see which ones can be removed. But to effectively check each chunk, we're going to have to have generated the neighboring chunks first. The problem we're going to face here is if the client requests that chunk straight away, whilst the terrain workers are generating the world, we're going to find that chunks aren't generating quick enough for you to be able to render the neighbours as well, unless you wait. We can't just wait until the neighbours have been generated to generate a chunk. It's going to halt the whole system, your client isn't going to get any chunks, and your game's going to break. Therefore, we set up something called a coroutine, and in this coroutine, we check if all of the neighbouring chunks of that chunk you're trying to render are generated. Now, if they're still not generated, it will just go back into the 
the pool of coroutine won't fire the event to render the chunk on the client. However, if this comes back true, then we know that all of the neighbors are there and we can then fire the event to the client to say, hey, we've got all the neighbors, render the chunk. As a result of this, now we have all the neighbors, we can now check those edge cases and this creates what you can see here. It's just the surface layer without any extra blocks underneath that are unnecessary. Now, this took a couple of tries to get. As you can see, I did fail miserably a couple of times. Some of the neighboring block functionalities were incorrect and it was messing it up. However, once it worked, it was very performant friendly. Before I do anything with reworking the noise functions and biome system with textures, I want to add greedy messing to the system so that we can reduce the amount of parts that the client has to render. We got rid of most of them, but there's still more things we can do. So I tried two methods for this. I tried it on the client side and the server side. I'm still trying the server side method of greedy meshing, and it seems to be very promising. However, as you can see, the result is that the chunk mesh is broken into larger parts based on the same block. So if the block ID is the same in the buffer, then it will increase the size of the mesh until that block changes. Now that is it for the performance improvements in this Minecraft terrain generation in Roblox Studio. Now that we've got a more performant friendly model, we can now introduce the noise functions and the biome system that Minecraft uses into our system. Make the generation look a little bit more exciting, because at the moment it's just 3D noise with a hyperbolic tangent squashing factor, which isn't very exciting. For re-implementing the noise functions, I wanted to make sure that we were actually implementing it correctly. So I made use of the editable images that that Roblox implemented. And as you can see from the results here, I can change around the noise values whilst I'm playing, so I can get an in-time real view of the noise functions. Now you're probably wondering how I actually made these noise maps, and obviously all sources linked in the description to show you how this has been made, as we have used what Minecraft used, which we did go over in the last videos, called spline points. Now in episode one, we were using linear spline points, and this means that there was no graduation in the terrain, and this was really affecting how the terrain actually looked. However, Roblox has something called float curves, and the float curves allow you to create these seamless transitions as seen on the screen here and for each continentalness peaks and valleys and erosion we can create our own spline graph which has been displayed on these three images and in replacing the linear combination with these float curve combination you can see how much improvement it has on these noise maps I mean it looks incredible and this is the same as how Minecraft does it sources will be linked in the description but effectively this produces the outcome of peaks and valleys with rivers however the one problem with float curves is they can't be read and written in parallel so we have to synchronize our terrain generation, which can affect performance. So hopefully they will improve that in the future. Now, as a result, you can see on the terrain generation, if I add the biomes in, it looks absolutely amazing. Now the decals are gonna change, but you can see here that we have rivers, we have mountains, peaks, different biomes where they should be, and also grass, even have snow as well. I just need to improve my pixel art skills. It does look a little bit horrible, but that'll be done in episode four. Now the final thing I did wanna add in this Minecraft clone is the character itself and breaking blocks. If a breaking block obviously all we need to do is when the user breaks a block we do a chunk update and it updates the whole chunk with the new value and re-renders it on the client and this is pretty straightforward to do as you can see it worked really well especially with the implementation of removing all the blocks underneath you can see how effective this is here and this allows us now to break blocks in the game and you can see I've added these kind of particle animations cannot pick up blocks yet but that will definitely be in the next episode finally also the algorithm I used to raycast was actually the DDA algorithm there'll be a link to it in the description the much more performant way of selecting blocks and also these blocks are really meshed as well so it works really well because if we raycast to the block and the block isn't just four by four and it's been greedy meshed then this raycasting wouldn't actually work however these are the results of our minecraft clone at the moment at the moment it's much more performant than it was before it's not lagging at all when we generate our chunks and i have full control of how many chunks you can generate at a time and how many client chunks you can request if you have any ideas and updates you want me to add in the next video which i'll get to straight away then please do let me know i hope you did enjoy this one leave a like if you did enjoy it if you have any questions about today's video on how I implemented certain aspects, do leave a comment or join my Discord and message me there.